Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks tutorial. Now in this video I'll be showing you how to use the new cameras and screams that have been added to the game here in Stormworks. We'll go over how to use them, what components you'll need, uh, how to wire them all up and what cool things they can do. Now if you're enjoying this videos, comment below and what else you'd like to see in any of my future videos. While you're there, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and click the little bell icon to be notified of any of my upcoming content as soon as it gets posted. So all said, let's get straight into it and get started with the tutorial. So we're back here in the workbench. As you can see, I have a little base as we usually do for these examples and tutorials. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to build up a little base here where we're going to be putting our screen on. Now, the screen I'm going to be using for this tutorial is going to be the five by three. You obviously have different options of whichever ones you want to use in your own creation, but I'm just going to be using this one. Now, the first thing we notice when we put these down is they have a little arrow. Little arrow means which way it's actually facing up, okay? So this is up, so it's in the right position for this tutorial. Now, along with that, we're going to be using a couple different cameras. We're going to be using all three of the cameras and I'm gonna show you how to actually switch between them. Along with that, I'll also show you how to actually do the different things like night vision, uh, pitch pivot, and all those cool things on the gimbal camber itself. So you can see here, we have the three different cameras. I'm just gonna grab the first one, which is our small one. I'm gonna place it down. You can see these also have the little arrow on them, also indicating which way is up, okay? We're gonna grab our medium one, which is over here, also facing up. And then lastly, we're going to grab our gimbal camera, which is just going to be here. We want to face it up. So imagine it's going to be underneath a vehicle like this, but we're gonna face it this way. So we're gonna put it like that. Okay, cool. So once we have that down, the next thing, actually, you know what, let's put this down this way and it'll be a little bit easier to see this way. Okay, so we have our three cameras. Obviously, because we're in advanced mode, we'll need a battery to power all of this. So I'm just gonna go grab a battery right here and place it down. Along with that, we also need a couple controls. So the first control I'm gonna put is going to be to pivot and pitch our gimbal camera. So to do that, I'm just going to be using a simple lever. So we'll get the lever, we'll place it down just over here. And this is going to be for our pitch. And then another one here is going to be for our pivot. Okay, so we got those two down nice and easy and simple so far. The next thing we want is obviously some way to enable our night vision on our cameras. And then we also want another one to actually toggle between the different type of screens. Okay, now to toggle between different type of screens, you can do it different ways. You can use a keypad, you can use an on off. Uh, it's really up to you on which way you want to do it. For, for this example, I'm just going to be using a keypad. So I'm gonna say, well, one will be our small camera, two is going to be our medium camera, and three is going to be the other one. And I'll show you how to get that all set up using the video composite switch box, uh, which is quite easy and quite simple. Now, the other things we wanna check is make sure the levers are on a negative one, and we also gonna put the sensitivity to about 20, uh, and this is going to be for the pitch of the camera. So I'm just going to write pitch, and then we're going to do the same thing for the pivot here. Now, the reason why I do that is obviously so we can rotate left and right on either side on the pitch and also on the pivot. Okay, great. So we got that done. This is pretty much the basics. We're also going to need some way of turning our screen on. Now, once again, you can use a key button or you can just use an on signal if you always want your screen to be turned on. It's really up to you. Uh, I'm gonna use a key switch, how about that? We'll use a key switch underneath here and that's going to be to actually turn our monitors on, okay? Great. We wanna get a little bit of the logic set up. Uh, you can see here, we obviously have our pivots and stuff, so we're gonna go and do that. So let's get this, this is going to be our pitch, so let's connect it to our pitch here. We also have our throttle, which is going to be pivot. Let's get that to pivot. We also need another one here, actually, for the uh, zoom. We'll, we'll test out the zoom here of the camera also. So we'll get that down. Uh, zoom is between zero and one. Uh, sensitivity, let's put to about 20 also, and we'll then type zoom here. Great. Once we have the zoom down, uh, we can also get that connected up. Great. And you can see we also have the zoom of the medium camera and we also have the infrared mode on both of those medium and also the gimbal camera. So we'll get that on. This is going to be our infrared. So I'm gonna write here IR. Great. This is going to be our key switch for our channel. So channel, great. We'll get that down there. And then the other one is our on and off, which we'll get done now for the actual monitor itself. Now, along with that, um, you obviously have the three video inputs over here and we have the other output over here. Now we can connect them directly to this if we wanted to. However, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be connecting it through a micropressor 
processor itself. So I'm gonna to go to our mic processor, we're gonna create a new one. This one is going to be our video test, okay? Once we have that done, um, we're gonna just increase the size a bit because I don't know how many things we need on it just yet. We can also get our, our actual symbol on here. So we're going to just create a T for test once again, and we're gonna to go to our logic. Now the logic part of it, what we're going to need is we're going to need three video ins. Okay, so we have our three video ins and I'm going to name these right now. So we could do input, uh, this will be small camera and then medium camera. And then we're going to do gimbal camera. Okay, so we have our three inputs over here. Along with that, we will also need one video output. So we're gonna go here and do output. Great, and then we also need another one is going to be for, we need to switch between the three so we need a number input, okay? So we can go grab here, we can go to our number, we can go input, that's going to be changing the channels, okay? Cool, so the next thing we need to do is actually jump into our logic. So you can see here we have our number coming in, we have our three coming in here, so we got gimbal camera, we have medium camera, and we have small camera. Those are gonna come into our switch boxes, and then we also have our output, and then we also have, as I said earlier, is our input to depend on what channel we want. So for the channel we want, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using threshold gates, okay? So we're going to use one threshold gate here, and we're gonna grab two more of those because obviously we have three channels. So we'll grab three, just put it over here, and you can see here, we're gonna connect those up, we're gonna say, if the first one is on one, then we're going to have this one on. If the other one is on two, then we're going to have that one. And if the other one is on three, then we'll have the third one. We're going to now add in our switch boxes, which is just over here. You can see we'll add three of them. I'm just going to hold down shift one, two, and three. And you can see it's placed all those down. We're then going to connect the one to the first one, second one to the second one, and third one to the third one. And then it's going to say, well, hey, if the first one is on, we want the small camera to go through. If the second one is on, we want the medium camera to go through. And if we, the third one is on, we want the gimbal camera to go through, okay? So we're then going to go and send through our video outputs. Now we're gonna say, well, hey, if camera one is on, it's going to go through here and it's gonna be the off and it's gonna go out into this output over here, okay? Then it says, well, hey, if it's on, it's gonna override it and it's gonna be on channel two and that's what it's gonna send out. If we're on three, it's then going to take this and send it out, okay? So it all works in tandem itself. It just depends on what channel it's reading from. The next thing we want to do is go and save it. So I'm just gonna call it test video tutorial. Okay, perfect. We can go now exit there and we can actually go and grab our microprocessor itself. Now I know it's the one in the T, great. We can place that down. And the last thing we need to do is actually just get this connected up. So we're gonna take the small camera and get it connected to the small camera. We're gonna take the medium camera and get it connected to the medium camera. And same goes with the last one for the gimbal camera, okay? So we see, got those three connected and we have one output which is gonna to go to there. If we then move on to our data, we then need to obviously connect our number here to the microprocessor to tell it which channel we want it to be on. Last thing is just double check we have everything connected. Obviously the electricity is the most important thing here because we're in advanced mode, so we're gonna go and get that all connected. Now we can go and actually spawn this in for the first time and hopefully everything works. Okay, so you can see we have our three different cameras just over there, all nice and connected. We have all our controls there. Hopefully if we do the pitch, you can see that is now pitching up and down. And if we do the zoom, zoom will also work. We obviously can't check that with the screen being off and the rotate also works. So the next thing we're going to do is go and get our key switch on and our screen should be on now. Now we're gonna go and get it onto channel one. So we enable channel one and you can see now our small little camera is working. All nice and great. If we go and switch it to channel two, we now move on to our next camera, okay? Which is just over here. You can see that obviously has a little bit of a different field of view. That's because you can actually zoom on it. Same goes with the gimbal camera, okay? We switch to get real field three. You can now see that we can actually zoom all the way in and it does zoom quite far in and we can use the pitch to obviously go and do that. And you can see, we can actually see that exact writing on that wall. That how, that's how far these cameras will zoom. And it's really cool. We also have the IR mode that you can switch between. You can see here, if I'm just gonna go switch it to nighttime, you can obviously see that this, if we zoom out, 
you can see in the dark. Obviously, there's a little bit of lighting in here, so it is uh, not fair enough. Uh, let's see if we can just pitch it out and get it to go on the outside. And then let's look at the outside here. Okay, and now let's zoom in and you can see that looks a little bit better. Now, as I was saying earlier, you also, or actually in one of the last videos, you could also, if you want to use one of the IR modes on one of the spotlights, to go and do that, just return to the workbench here, grab one of your spotlights. Uh, it can be any one of them. It can be the large one. It can be the medium one. It, it's up to you on which one you want to use. You can use any three of these. I'm just gonna grab the mounted one. And you can see here, if I go and place it down over here, you have a little box on it when you click on it and it says infrared. We wanna tick that, enable it, and then just obviously do the normal connections. We wanna get some electricity. We also wanna get the on off. We're gonna get that to the on off of the system. And you can now see when we spawn this in and turn it to IR mode. Actually, I'm gonna go turn the lights off for the hangar and see if we can get it to pitch black in here, first of all. Door, lights, let's get the lights off. Okay, so it's now pitch black. We can now test out the IR of that light there. So system on, cool. Great. And you can see the light has come on. However, it's actually not shining any light there. That's because it's an infrared mode. So if we go and turn the IR mode there and we switch to channel three, because that's our gimbal camera, you can now see that we actually have a spotlight there that's being used in IR mode, which is really cool. Okay, really quite nice and useful. Obviously, remember it doesn't actually shine any light out, so you won't see anything over there. Let's go and switch it back to daytime here. So that's pretty much about it for videos. Um, guys, you can obviously get into more advanced things and use the Lua script. Be sure to check out my next video where we will be talking about the Lua script and how to use that in the basics. But this pretty much covers everything you need to know about the cameras, how to wire them, how to use them, and also the screens themselves and what options you have with the screens. So I think we'll go ahead and end today's video over there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it somewhat entertaining and informative as always, and we'll see you in the next one.